Hello and welcome back to my channel. It is of course only me again and today we are out metal detecting in an average ordinary windswept pasture field. Or is it? That's right, this isn't your normal everyday average pasture field. 2,000 years ago in this particular field was a little camp or possibly a farmstead that housed Roman soldiers, possibly even Romanized local people. And in this field, they built a massive defensive site. There was a triple ditched enclosure with possibly a slightly later squared enclosure. And very recently, if you remember on the channel, we came into this field and we found a handful of Roman coins. We have since been back into this field and we have found even more. The coins are now totaling to 35 coins mostly consisting of silver or part silver debased Antonini anus coins and they sort of range from the very late sort of third century and maybe a little bit back. It was a really really special find and we have come back to see if we can find some more. But here's the thing, we have been over that hot spot in the field with every type of metal detector that we own. We have also used every different coil size and frequencies available to us and we're pretty confident that we've pretty much got everything within the sort of levels that our metal detectors can detect. But today I have come back with some help. I have got Brian and Mr Tweed with me today. They're going to be using their metal detectors and I'm going to be using something that's designed a little bit better for finding large masses under the ground. So stay tuned if you want to see if we find anything. Today we are going to be hunting for the hoard and of course anything that comes out of the ground you're going to see it right here on the channel first so stay tuned for that one. But without further ado, that's the talking out of the way. I will see all of you on the very first hole. Okay, so as I said in the intro, metal detectors have their place and Brian and Mr Tweed are currently in the field in an area that we've gridded out searching for small metal items, hopefully some more hoard coins. But today I have come equipped with a twin box metal detector. This is of course the XP Extreme Hunter. It's the only fast multi-frequency twin box detector on the market and we are going to use this today in order to be able to find potentially what could be a buried mass of ancient Roman coins in this field. Now twin box detectors are very unique, they are very different to normal metal detectors. They aren't looking for small metal items near the surface, these will completely look through that and skip those. These are looking for buried large high conductive targets that could be meters under the ground. So you have to have a specific use for this but honestly if there was a field where you would want to try this on it would be a field where you've had many many coins that consisted around a same age so you know potentially from a hoard or a scattered hoard well guess what they could be far deeper than your detector can detect so you're going to need a machine just like this and that is why I have come prepared today and I'm going to be using this alongside the guys here with the metal detectors and then we'll get out start using it and let's see if we get any nice targets plan of action well if I do get a nice target I'm going to mark it with a wooden stake and then those guys over there with the metal detectors are just going to go over the top of it to make sure that it isn't going to be a target close to the ground so let's do that now let's get this set up and uh, yeah can't wait
Okay, so that's pretty much it. We're all set up and ready to go. It literally took about three minutes to set this Extreme Hunter machine up, which was really, really impressive. It is really simple to do. It's just a couple of screw bolts to hold everything together. And yeah, nice and quick, nice and simple. And it's about time for us to get into the field now and see what we can find with it. So a couple of really important things to note. If some of you are interested in looking at getting this machine, um, it's a great machine, I don't blame you, but there's a couple of things you just might need to take note of that is you cannot wear anything with metal on it's that sensitive the field searching between two coils you've got to remember that one is sending a signal one is receiving a signal and it's constantly bouncing back through well you're going to be right in the middle of those signals being sent and received so if you're wearing anything that's got metal on then it's going to really interfere with that target so I've got the sweatpants on today, no metal, no belt, no clips, no ringlets, anything like that. Um, and hopefully we're gonna go out and find something really, really good. So I'm gonna turn this on, get it set up, go out in the field, and let's hope that we can find some really nice targets. But obviously it does mean we might have to dig them as well. Okay, so we definitely have a little hot spot down here. It's definitely picking up a target. If you listen very carefully, you see it come through there and then on the back coil as you go over it. And if I walk beside it, it doesn't really pick it up. What you're hearing all the time is the set threshold level that I've set in, which is a gradual little hum in the background and it seems to be a very specific spot just in the field have a listen there and there so that is definitely a target but it is showing that it's quite deep but I'm gonna mark it anyway right there and then as you go over it right there now of course this could be um, a ferrous target so the important thing to do is to mark it i've got some wooden bamboo canes so i'm going to stick one in the ground where i think that target is and then i'll get brian or mr tweed to go over it with their metal detector a little bit later on when i've marked out five or six or so targets but that is a great start and um so easy to use it's so effortless you just hold it walk up and down and it's finding targets but the uh the peaks and the troughs on this display actually show you how deep things are under the ground and it was such a shallow kind of peak coming through 
that it's indicating that whatever this small target is, is going to be relatively deep. So the chances of them being able to pick it up with their metal detector are very slim, um, but it's not giving me any iron sounding and uh, the graph isn't displaying any hatch markings, which is a clear indication of iron. So potentially it's a good target, but all I'm gonna do at this stage is mark it and then we'll move on and see what other targets we get. So I have now been walking up and down this field for about an hour to an hour and a half. And uh, it's pretty easy going, I must say. You just hold it in your hand and you walk up and down. Um, the machine makes some noises. You might have to sort of tune it every now and again just to keep that sort of steady, constant ground hum. Um, but yeah, I've been finding some things. I've marked a few targets in the field. Um, they've been quite interesting targets. Now, I'm pretty sure that these targets are just iron targets. And the reason I say that is because on the uh, display, because you get a nice live display with the Extreme Hunter, it's really, really cool actually, I must admit. But it shows you live feedback as you're going over the ground. And also if you do go over a positive target, it will actually show you the peaks and troughs associated with it. So what you need to do is look at the display and it will show you the first hit from the front coil here and then it shows you a little dip in there, which is where you essentially go over it. So it's like a negative response. And then once the back coil hits that target, you then get another peak coming through on the digital display. And it's really easy to tell that they're iron, especially if you've got your discrimination IAR set to five, like I have. Um, it really does sort of show you and let you sort of listen to what is iron in the ground. But the display also shows you this kind of hatched out effect when it comes to the peaks so for instance they're not solid they are dotted and what that essentially means is is that it is picking up a target um, it's relatively sort of close um, possibly quite a small target as well but it must be an iron target because you can see that it's hatched out and then you've got the negative response as you're walking over it and then the back coil here also hatched out. They are definitely iron targets for sure. So we haven't quite found our whore target yet but I'm gonna keep going for a little while. I absolutely love using this. Um, I think it's absolutely great. The other guys are still out doing some detecting as well so we'll catch up with them in a little bit and see if they've had any nice coins or any other other artifacts as well but uh, yeah let's keep going hopefully we get some more nice positive responses okay so I know this is a bit extreme but I have just dragged in this huge piece of corrugated steel and just laid it onto the edge of the field here and the reason why I've done that is because I'm going to demonstrate to you the different types of waves and peaks that you would see if you went over a target that was really high conductive and it was a large target so obviously this is lying on the top so to offset that i'm going to raise it up a little bit but imagine if this was meters under the ground the machine is more than capable of finding something this large maybe even a quarter this large uh, probably two to three maybe even four meters under the ground so it's um, a really good test but i'll pause the display the live display and then we can all have a look and see what a nice positive target would sound like if we went over one in this field. So let's do that now. So as you can see here, the main difference obviously between the target signals is that they are no longer hatched. They are nice, big, positive, dark, responsive signals. You've got the front coil here, and here, of course, you've got the back coil, and a little section in between there is just the voided bit where you've walked over that target. Now, the higher that particular peak is, the more responsive it is, and the likelihood is the closer it is to the ground, and obviously the less responsive, so the smaller the peak is gonna be slightly deeper, but it could also indicate that the target is much smaller as well well so that is really kind of what you're looking for a nice big positive response like that if you get something like that on the display here and you go over it with a detector and you can't find it with a detector chances are underneath the ground you have got a wonderfully nice big high conductive target that most certainly needs investigating with a shovel or two okay so that is all we have time for in today's video i'm afraid 
We didn't find the hoard, but it is early days. This is our very first time coming back in the field after we've been sure that we've pretty much cleaned it out of surface coinage. Um, so it's the first opportunity we've had to come back in here and actually see if there was anything deep and buried under the ground. Um, using the Extreme Hunter was an amazing experience today. I can really see the benefits of why you might want that machine as a secondary option. You've got to remember it is not a metal detector. It isn't going to find surface items. It certainly isn't going to find anything small. You're really kind of looking at shoebox kind of size stuff, if not bigger. And then it has to be obviously relatively deep under the ground. But you know, there are so many uses for a machine like that. And honestly, if you guys are going out metal detecting and you're in fields where you're picking up coinage and they're all from around the same sort of time period. So, you know, you've picked up five or 10 Tudor coins. Chances are there could be a hoard there. And that is exactly the type of situation that you're going to want an extra M hunter because you can go back over the field once you're pretty much sure that all of the surface targets have been picked up and then just walk up and down nice and casually, nice and easily, waiting for that nice high responsive sound from the Xtrem. So definitely see why people want that. And you know, none of us got any Roman coins today and we were kind of expecting that. I said to everybody that, you know, we have cleaned this field out. We are pretty sure that there's no more coins within reach of our metal detector. Um, and I did a bit this afternoon and I didn't even find any either. So, you know, that is just the way it goes, but we will be back in here. We will be continuing to search for this hoard and you can absolutely guarantee that I'm going to be using the Xtrim Hunter machine as well many, many times over this field to try and find that nice little cache if it's here, although I'm pretty sure that it is. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. It's been a cold, windswept January day, but I've really enjoyed getting out and about, and I hope you've enjoyed watching the video too. Please do remember that if you want to see more videos just like this, or even if you're interested, if we ever even find the pot of coins, then all you have to do is subscribe below. It's nice and free, it's nice and easy, and it's simple to do, and it's much appreciated as well. But anyway, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching again, and I will catch you all on the next hole.